Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show how you can get better quality out of 360 photography using those portable cameras like the Insta 361X, KuCam, or the Ricoh Thetas, for instance like the Z1. Even though the Z1 is a really good camera for its particular price point, as if you've ever played with these cameras, you tried to use them for pro work, you know that their quality can be quite poor. Even when they're shooting in raw, they still tend to have a very poor signal to noise ratio, so you can get a lot of noise in the shadows. Now, you might think of using these, since you can't fire a flash or anything, just to HDR, just do an in-camera HDR, but that will also only produce a JPEG, and it really defeats the purpose of trying to shoot in raw to have a lot of editing flexibility. So some of the examples you may have seen me post recently on Facebook, for instance, those, a lot of those, when I was shooting with just the Ricoh Theta, that was using exposure blending, using luminosity masking, which is what I'm gonna show in this tutorial today. Now it is a bit involved, and there's a lot to really cover, so I'm gonna cover the luminosity masking portion of this now. Got a lot more tutorials coming up later as far as using DSLRs. I'm gonna show a little bit in this video, and of course wrap up this video with some of the last final things that you might wanna do after exposure blending using one of these portable 360 cameras. You ready to take a look at how this is done? Let's get started. So here's the example that I'm going to use here, and this was shot fairly large house. A lot of times I might have gone and tried to upsell this for a higher price package, not using the portable cameras, but going for something more high-end with the DSLR. Anyways, to show you what this kind of looked like at the end, this is then just a, uh, a screen capture here showing, I'm using Marzipano, but um, what the 360 looked like. Now I've got some views going outside, and you can see the quality is looking fairly good. A lot of things are fairly sharp in this. We can spin this around and see that it's not that bad. Had to do some color corrections and things in post. I'll touch on that just briefly here. But the idea here is that having something that was at least somewhat better exposure blended was definitely better than taking, for instance, this image, which is one exposure, another exposure. And you can see none of the exposures that I was taking by themselves was very good. If I tried to adjust one of them on its own, the signal to noise ratio would result in a a lot of grain. So by taking all these multiple exposures, I'm gonna exposure blend that. Now that's a fair amount of work compared to, for instance, if we had just used a DSLR. So take, for instance, this example. This is a, an ideal example of where I get hired to use the DSLR. It's just a higher price package, and it takes then into account the a little bit more time on site to, to uh, come up with something like this. But um, the editing time can be a lot less. There's no exposure blending. This was flash and blended. I've got more tutorials coming up on how to shoot stuff like this, so please be patient. I know a lot of you have been asking me, hey, where is that? I've got more information, more tutorials coming on that. And if you think that this can only be done in small spaces, let me just show you real quick. The DSLR approach can be used for very large places like this. This is just using one flash, by the way, with a very simple technique. And once again, I'll be covering this in upcoming tutorials and more information soon, so please bear with me. What we're going to do today, though, is we're working on just this very simple example here. Uh, very nice nice house, um, added the fire in post, um, but it gets you an okay result, um, something better than you would just get out of camera. So let's dive into it. So the idea here is that all of these images have been opened as layers into Photoshop from Lightroom. Before they did, when they were first imported from uh, into Lightroom, you want to make sure that you're applying no sharpening. This is going to be very important because any sharpening at this point in the game is going to start introducing noise. You don't want that. Now this will look very soft. If you go in here 100%, you can see this stuff just looks awful. It's just very terribly soft, but most raw files are. Make sure that you adjust for, uh, make sure the chromatic aberrations are off, excuse me, selected when you import it into Lightroom and also no uh, lens corrections. Make sure though above all else, no sharpening. You don't want any sharpening at all. So what I do is I take multiple exposures. This one is obviously very well overexposed and you can see it in the histogram up here. But the reason being is that I'm exposing for the shadows. So in here I've got this very deep shadowed area where the staircase is, there's shattered areas 
areas in the dining room over here in this little alcove. And even as we get into the main room where we're gonna have our initial view in this 360 pan of the floor, everything else is very much in shadow. So if I had used, for instance, the middle exposure here, there'd be a lot of grain, a lot of noise. So anyways, here's all the exposures and the way they should be loaded up, the way that you shoot them is brightest first and then you progressively get darker until at the very end, you've got something like this. Getting that full view to the outside for this property isn't necessary and it's almost impossible using one of these 360 cameras, especially with all those little uh, window frames in there. So anyways, what we'll do is we'll turn on all these layers and we'll start the process. So what we'll first do is you do this for every single one of the layers. You take the next layer below and you drag it to the top. So in this case, we're just starting out. It's the second layer. We move that up to the top. Okay. Now you want to add a hide all layer mask. I like to go layer mask and then hide all. Now you go to the layer directly below it, and this is where we're going to apply the luminosity masking. To do this, you go to the channels tab on this layers pane. On this RGB icon, do a control click. What that has done is now selected things on that particular layer that were highlighted at 50% or greater. So this gives us immediately an area where we can start selectively painting in on the mask those highlighted areas with that now darker exposure. We want to refine that though, and we're going to do that with what's known as an intersection, which is going control, alt, shift, click. And you can see the marching ants now got refined. On the first exposure, I tend to do one intersection, and as we move on to other exposures, those intersections become more and more. I'll get to that shortly. Go back to the Layers tab, and now select the layer mask for that uppermost layer. Now take a brush, and we're gonna use about a 30% flow. You can see it up here, 30% flow. Take a fairly large size, and I like to just tap in some of that, because even though you've got marching ants around these areas, it's not fully defining that area. In fact, what luminosity masking is doing is it's feathering in those selections. So you don't want to all of a sudden just hit the delete key or somehow select it. You actually want to brush that in. You'll get better results doing that. So over here, I know there's a lot that needs to be brushed in. So I just increased my brush size there. And you can see what's now happening on the mask over here is that those areas of extreme highlight are starting to get toned down. So that's good, that's exactly what we want. So I'll deselect this Control D. Let's take a look at the difference. This was our bright exposure by adding in just luminosity masking of the next exposure, two thirds stop away from it, we got this. If I had used that whole layer, it would look like this, which is something we definitely don't want. So anyways, now we've got that selectively just placed in there. Now let's go to the next layer and do the same thing. So now we go to the next exposure we drag that all the way up to the top and then layer mask hide. Go to the layer directly below it, select the layer, go to the channels tab, do a control click on the RGB icon and now do your intersections. You do your intersections based on where you want those highlighted regions to start being defined. Let's zoom in here a little bit more on this particular lens. So what we want is we don't care about this that's being selected on the carpet, that's fine. We want to really refine this to get more of the windows. So now as you do your intersections, which once, you get, once again are control alt shift click, immediately that went away on the first intersection and we'll do a couple more. Three four, five, maybe six intersections on that, okay? And you can see how well that got refined. Once again, go back to the Layers tab, select the layer mask of that uppermost layer, take a brush at 30% opacity, and start tapping in some of that to reduce those glares, okay? So now it's selecting, see, just those highlighted regions. As I'm painting this, you can see it's hardly touching the wall over here on the far left because that luminosity mask is protecting it. If I tried to do this manually without a luminosity mask, I would inevitably overlap onto those regions. For instance, I'll deselect it, and you can see what would happen. I don't want that. So that allowed me to get closer. Now, instead of going through all of these, 
I have a Photoshop file over here where I saved it. And I also had it in, by the way, flames into the fireplace. Um, but this is still really soft. It's not a finished product, but you can see that this is much better than what we had if we had just used one single bright exposure. Now, this is still measuring very hot. You can see the histogram up here. It's very right of center, but that's what we want because now we can start bringing back some of those highlights. We've now retained a better signal to noise ratio, limiting the grain. And as we reduce highlights, we won't have as much noise. If we were to try to raise shadows, we would. So now this, as it was saved, when it was taken back over to Lightroom and after some adjustments, it looked like this. Now, it didn't come out of uh, Photoshop looking like that. We can obviously see back here, this is what it looked like. So a couple things were applied. One, I've got a preset that I use um, that basically does the sharpening. So a lot of sharpening on this, but the basic thing is you can see it came in from here. This is what it looked like when I was done. This is what it looked like. I call it a 360 full bump is that preset. You can see over here some of the things it did. You can go ahead and pause if you want to, to take a look at these basic settings. Okay, now if you'd like to take a look at the other ones, now I'm going to show you down here another important area, and then if you want to, you can pause to see what these are. Basically, sharpening is extremely high, masking is high, and also I'm doing a luminance noise reduction, which then helps to resolve a lot of the uh, noise that will be introduced by the sharpening, and color um, uh, noise reduction is also very high. Now if we go in here just on this, we can see how sharp that was compared to with out applying it, it's just terribly soft. And this is probably what you're used to seeing. But using the DNG files, I have a lot of flexibility, not just from shooting raw, but also from the fact that I was using luminosity masking to selectively use those areas. Now, I started using a custom white balance to bring that better, and then started playing with different tints and different exposures and whatnot, till I got this looking product. And of course, then if we go back here and take a look at that, this is then what the 360 pano turned out. It's, it's better than what it would be straight out of camera. It's not the best way to go. For a luxury house like this, I definitely would have preferred to use the DSLR approach, which of course I'll be covering at another time. For right now though, this is just luminosity masking. And once again, don't forget to apply some of those uh, very particular preset values, especially when it comes to the sharpening and the luminance. And if you'll notice then also, the highlights were taken down a lot and the exposure was dropped down a little bit too and look where our histogram is now. So now I've got a better exposed picture but all along the way I never really had to deal with as much noise because I broadened the dynamic range and I didn't have to work with shadows where the signal to noise ratio would be poorest. Now I know that's a bit complicated and if you're not used to using Photoshop and some of these techniques or Lightroom, then of course that's gonna be very difficult. That's gonna be a big hurdle to overcome. So an easier way to shoot this, if you're familiar with using DSLRs, is to use the DSLR approach. I'm gonna be showing more on that coming up. Things have just been so slammed. I'm sure you're the same way if you're getting a lot of requests for virtual tours since the, the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of people want these. By the way, I've got an earlier video talking about some of the same safety protocols and I really want to reiterate the importance of being safe on site. If you're doing this, yes, there's a big market for it, but you have to make sure that you protect your health and the health and safety of everybody around you. Stay tuned. I definitely have more videos coming up that will show how to do the DSLR approach, different things when it comes to building virtual tours, different 360 related items and tutorials, and a lot more information on this all coming soon. So if you want, if you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.